Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I am tackling the standing collar trench coat that Danny Chu has released for free. Uh, this is a really fantastic pattern and the video format is going to be a little bit different this time around. In order to save time and try to get this out as quickly as possible, I decided I would just do little check-ins to show you where I was and talk about what I was going to do next. I think it worked, but let me know if you like this format. There's not actual footage of me sewing because it slows me down so much. I also make three pretty major mistakes and have to go back and fix them. So if you plan to use this as a sort of tutorial, bear that in mind and please watch the whole video before you start doing your own thing. So without further ado, here we go. First up is marking all of your pieces, and I highly recommend doing this. The markings do come in very handy. It is kind of time consuming though, so I'll only show you a little bit. I started with the lining pieces, these two guys. I sewed them together and then I serged the edges. I serged the bottom and then did a double hem. I did a double hem because it's 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, so I had the room for it. And yeah, you can see, line these up. Look at that, perfect. So that's cool. Uh, Part of my big hesitation with this whole project is that I really honestly do not know the order that things went in, and since I don't have this trench coat to look at, or stand color trench coat to look at, I am guessing. I just, I don't know. <laughs> now that the lining is done though, I can switch my machine over to dark uh, thread either brown or black. I haven't decided yet. I might do black. There's some top stitching. Make it stand out a bit. Um, oh my god, where to start? <laughs> this is so intimidating. So this is the facing of the front. And part of what's throwing me off about the facing is that if this is supposed to line up with the lining, and it is, I can't figure out any other way to do this. I have different seam allowances and completely different markings. Wrong side, wrong side, okay. So we're going to need to line this guy up. And I guess I'm just gonna try to line it up as neatly as possible. So in the interest of getting as much of the interior done before we move on to the exterior, I think I am going to stitch this to the facing. And hope for the best. Did I mark this on the facing? I did. Oh, excellent. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that marking is telling me that that is where the edge of the lining needs to go. So, cool. Alright, so we've got our facing and our lining connected. I did serge that edge and iron it flat. I I mean, especially when one of your fabrics is so much thicker, I went towards the thinner fabric. Just makes it a little easier. And that's usually how I see facings ironed anyway. So now we have those on hand when we need them. Now, we're gonna get rid of our pieces. All right, so our back pieces, let's do that now. We have the back yoke, which we only needed one of. 
I have marked these these three markings, uh, center back, and then I believe these are going to be the seams, the seam. So we got those all marked in. That's good. First, though, we're going to put these two together, and then we'll sew up the back. Or should I do the back first? It doesn't matter. So between the two options, it doesn't matter. I think I'm going to do the back first, and with. doing the back first, we actually want to make sure that we serge these edges independent of each other. And that's going to be because we have the stand hole in the back and we want to iron those to each side. So I'm going to finish them before I sew them. And then I'm going to pin our side back right sides facing to center back pieces and then once that is all one piece we'll stitch it to this guy and then do a top stitch over this so I will meet back when that is done all right touching base once again we have the top stitching detail on here we have I did go ahead and top stitch this because it's much easier to do that when everything is flat and the inside, you can see these two went towards center back. I always iron towards center back. Some people always iron towards center, like center front and center back, depending on which piece they're working on. I always iron towards center back. I don't know why, it's just how I learned it. Um, these guys, of course, got separated and finished individually. This one, I ironed up because we needed our top stitching to hold it down, and that worked out quite nicely. So next, I am going to, not that, dig in this obscene pile of pattern pieces, which you think would go down at some point, but they haven't. Okay, so these are the belt loops, and I am going to finish one edge of the belt loop and then fold it in three and then top stitch on both sides before you even cut them apart. We only need one of the loops right now, but I want to put it on the back while it's still flat. Okay, so this is all three of the belt loops, nicely made up, and they're still relatively thin, nice and bendy. To mark them, we go back to our pattern piece, lay it as nicely as possible, and mark. It's really obnoxious to get it wrong at this point. So then I use the pattern piece to line up the belt loop. I have found it's easier for me to line up one end, top stitch it, and then line up the second end, trim it down just the tiniest bit, and then top stitch that. That, so, that gives me the most control over what the final product end up, ends up looking like. Okay, so this is it for the back piece. For now, we've got our belt loop that functions. I did redo this top stitching multiple times to try and make it look nicer, and it's still only okay, but that's fine. So this I'm going to set aside and move on to the dreaded center front and <laughs> figuring out these pockets. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. To start with the pockets, we need to attach the pockets to the center front. This is my first big mistake. 
um, I do end up having to rip this later because the pocket flap needs to be sandwiched between these two pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and skip a lot of stuff that isn't relevant. So to make those pocket pieces, I use a method that I learned from one of Tatiana's patterns and it's a truly excellent method. You cut off the seam allowance around the pieces that you need to sew right away and then you stitch just right along the actual fabric pattern piece. This gives you way more seam allowance to push through the machine and it makes your life so much easier. Then once you're done sewing those seams, you can trim everything down to your preferred seam allowance and get all of your notches and things done. Uh, this is really the best method for these tiny pocket pieces that keep cropping up. All right, top stitching is hard, but we got there in the end. Now this piece is gonna need to be wedged between these two because of course it is. So, seam rip ahoy. Oh yes, I ended up doing this seam twice too because I was off by a millimeter and I've been trying to be so precise and I was like, oh, it's fine. It doesn't matter if this is double stitched. It's not going to affect anything. The pattern piece markings match the pocket flap perfectly, so use all of those markings to match everything up nicely. This is very much one of those situations where I wish I had the jacket itself to look at to see if I'm even doing this right, but my best guess so far was stitch the pocket piece over the pocket flap and I've ironed it first flat and then back this way and this is how the pocket flap was sitting in the picture so I think I'm pretty on track there. Um, I did the same with the other side. After staring at this for a while I believe I am going to quick surge that this edge as well as the corresponding edge on this guy. <laughs> as much of it as I can because I don't know if any of you have used a serger, but that that's that's a problem. We're gonna I'm gonna go over that with the machine in a zigzag probably. <laughs> Cause I, I don't have any other way of Actually, I could probably just do the whole thing with the machine and the zigzag. Yeah, I think for the sake of brevity, that's what I will do. So when those two edges are finished, we will pin these together and then do the pockets in the way I described before, which, yeah, you basically stitch up to there, flip the seam allowance over, and then stitch around the edge flip it back, stitch down. And I think, I hope, that will be the end of the pockets. They are cool, but my goodness, they are a pain. Okay, so we have front pieces. There's the pocket. Yay, pocket. Uh, got our top stitching done. So in hindsight, I realized that I did overcomplicate the pocket. I didn't need to do the trick where I lifted my needle, cut the threads, put the needle back down with the seam allowance facing in a different direction. All of that was actually not necessary because the one pocket piece is a part of the side front and you can just iron this whole seam towards center front and it will lay nicely. So for your project, you don't need to overcomplicate it the way I did and I'm pointing out here. Uh, it's probably better if you don't in fact because then you won't have to clip into your seam to release that tension. Like it doesn't matter if your pocket can 
go backwards or forwards. It only needs to lay forwards. So, with that in mind, I will bring you back to past me. Okay, so this is the best picture we get. And that actually tells me quite a bit. We are going to top stitch to the very end. And then this is just gonna stitch down. Oh, okay. Here, match it. Oh! oh. <laughs> Look at that! Eh? Eh? That line's gonna be top stitched that, that, to there. So. And the strap must be a little bit longer than the marking because it needs to stick out a little bit. Okay, so I decided to show you the folding method I used for this to get the end to look nice. I So the first side to get folded over is the long side that has not been surged. And then I folded the end over. And then I folded the other long side up. And you can kind of mess with the end here to get this surging so that it doesn't show. And just iron. And it helps when you're ironing. You know, iron it real good. And then take the heat off and move, move it to somewhere that's cool on the ironing board. And push flat. Either with your hands or with like a piece of wood or something. I keep meaning to get a piece of wood for this purpose. Because if you hold it flat while it's cooling, the crease ends up much sharper and nicer in most fabrics. So that kind of helps, makes this really nice little strap, and then we're going to top stitch all around the long edges and this one short edge. To get my markings precise, I just cut a hole through my fabric and use that to mark the right side of the fabric. And this marking really doesn't get seen, but I would be careful not to go overboard with like a really bleedy style pen or something because it could bleed into something that would be seen. And that's no good. We are going to pin both sides with that little bulge. That bulge is important. Turns out it is necessary for the strap to hang correctly because once everything's done, it actually doesn't bulge at all and then we're gonna stitch those. So I figured I should hem these before I tack these down because I want it to be even across. It'll end up being something like that. And I noticed there's no stitching hem and I don't have hem tapes, but I do have this webbing stuff that I used for applique in the past and this should work if I sandwich it between my hem and that, and it should hold that up fairly nicely after it's ironed. So next I need to do the collar because everything else that there is to do can't be done until the collar is done, with the possible ex I mean with the exception of the sleeves, which I'm going to leave those off for now because the collar is more complicated and I want more ease of moving it around and stuff without having the sleeves in the way. Um, now we've got this lining to consider and I know I'm probably going to just sew the lining into the side seams and that will be fine. And I think the same with the sleeves, we're probably just going to want that sewn, like, uh, flat lining, basically. So I guess that's going to be what we do with all of these. So, in the interest of flat lining, I think I am actually going to baste it down so that it's not wiggling around and getting out of place. This was a terrible mistake, and I honestly don't know what my brain was doing this day because it became very clear as soon as I tried to install the zipper. 
So we're going to zip forward a little bit and I will show you why this is not what you want to do. So the only time I ever put zippers in nicely is when I do it wrong. And in this case, this is definitely wrong. Um, it's functional this way, but it's ugly. And this flops around. Even if you top stitch it, it's still ugly. And after checking the pictures, it's not right. I think I'm going to continue treating the lining as separate pieces. I'll connect these to the collar and then maybe when I'm doing the zipper I'll sandwich the zipper between them. Okay, so we're still mid attempt number two. We've got the zipper in and it looks pretty nice. There's no lining at all, that's over here. Got this prepped to be going in and when this goes in Yeah, uh, I was worried about the this piece, which is the flap, but looking closer at a lot of the pictures, it looks like this actually goes on after the zipper has been installed, so it just kind of goes right on top, basically. And so we can leave that until the very end, which we will want to leave till the very end because we will need to have it hemmed before we put that on. <laughs> I've had people express amazement that I know the order of things, and the truth is I don't. Usually, I just sort of figure it out. Like, you know, to have this look good, I need, you know, to have the finished end of this line up nicely with the finished end, end of the hem, obviously the hem needs to be done. Well, for the hem to be done, I need to sew the side seams up. To sew the side seams up, I need to have installed the sleeves. <laughs> so this little guy is just getting thrown over there. We'll do that at the end with the belt, which clearly doesn't need to be done until whenever. So now that we have our zipper looking nice and we know it zips, so that's good. This is going to go right side facing with this, and I am just going to line everything up. This extra zipper doesn't matter, we're going to trim that later. Which is what you see me doing here. Trimming out that zipper and all that extra bulk in the corners is going to really make your life easier when you need to iron all that flat and then top stitch it later. I've been looking at how the facing and the hem works and I'm thinking before I put the sleeves in and close up the side seams I'm gonna want to make the front facing look kind of nice because I'll want to do the top stitching and before I can do the top stitching I gotta figure out what's going on with this corner and I think if what I saw in the pictures was anything to go by. This is folded up like that and then kind of like that. So you only see a little bit of that. This is gonna eventually be folded so that you know the lining will cover up this edge but it won't go down so far as to peek out the bottom which is ideal. So I'm going to need to stitch this little part now. So to do that, we're going to flop this over this way. And to get this to fold nicely, I'm gonna try keeping this bit folded while I sew that. I'm sure there's like a terminology for this, that I am unaware of. And we're gonna do a seven millimeter um, seam there, just to this point, so that we can get it to do that fold up thing. 
We'll do that on both sides. And then we will leave the hem again to finish the top stitching along this zipper and this zipper. And then we will probably have to do the sleeves after that. So I realized that in doing the side seam, if I want to do the lining with the uh, exterior, this is going to make folding the exterior up, I'll only be able to fold it up to a certain level. Like, and I'm debating if that's acceptable. Because I can't fold this up over top of the lining, that's, that's just going to cause a mess. I could fold it under the lining, but then I would need to essentially run the seam down like that, and that's not as nice looking from the outside. Alright, so I can't stand the thought of budging this like that. I continued to waffle back and forth so much and eventually made a decision and then immediately changed my mind. So you see me unpicking just a tiny bit of the side seam so that I can tuck the front hems up underneath the lining and then put the back hem up. And we're going to do that the same way I did the sleeves, so I'm going to use that webbing to fuse it so that there's no visible stitching line on the outside. And this did take a lot of fiddling, but this is kind of what it ends up looking like when it's done, and I definitely prefer it. All right, so this is what I ended up coming up with. There's a split. This gets folded under so that it can fit under, and then press really, really well. This. I had surged with the folds in just because I could at that point and then realized that I didn't like how it hung over into the front so I folded it again because you know what I'm pretty ready to be done with this get that all folded up nice the hem looks nice there's so much string we'll get that eventually um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the webbing, iron that in, get my side seams pressed because I apparently haven't done that yet. Okay, so not only do I need to finish the flap, but I also have these two um, belt loops I forgot about and the belt itself. The front flap, if I'm reading the little doodled instructions correctly, which, you know, maybe, I think that it needs to be, essentially, I'm going to iron it flat, fold these, fold these ends nicely, iron it flat, and then straight stitch it surge the edge and then with the, the, when the, when the edge has been surged it's gonna we'll iron it with the edge just under and then lay it over top and top stitch it down so that the flap stays down over top of all that surging so the surging won't really be seen and yeah, I think that's how this needs to go. I think while I'm at it, I'm also going to put the two side belt loops on. And then I'll probably touch base again. 
tragedy has struck again. I thought the pockets, or not the pockets, I thought the uh, belt loops went on the side seam. They do not. They go here. Okay, cool. No problem, I thought. Only it's a big problem. I can't sew it on without sewing through the lining and making this ugly after all of my efforts to make it look nice. So rather than try to make a tube and turn it inside out, which has always been one of my absolute least favorite things to do in sewing, I have ironed all the creases into this piece and I am going to see if I can get away with top stitching around the whole thing without having done that original stitch. I figure I'm going to have to top stitch it anyway and just frankly this sounds so much less awful than the tube method which again the very thought of makes me cringe. So that works surprisingly well and is now my go-to method for making thin straps like this because that's so much better than turning the little tube inside out. I got one little wobble on the end of this one because my walking foot decided to catch this end like it likes to and I've decided I don't care. That's, that's the extent of that. All that's left is to thread the belt through the teeny tiny belt loops and it is now a standing collar trench coat. Um, yeah, this project turned out way better than I thought it was going to. Uh, I really, really love how the texture of the fabric ended up looking and I think it... Actually, somebody mentioned that it kind of gives it a, an almost leather vibe despite the fact that it's just cotton print. Um, so that's pretty fun. I think going forward I will refrain from recording my first attempt at a pattern because I don't think it's going to be as useful for people who want to watch my videos as a sort of tutorial. This one felt more like a project blog than a tutorial. I hope that you did get something out of it though. Hopefully maybe my techniques will help you in your endeavors because this is a super fun project. It's a really gorgeous end product and if you want a spicy challenge during some hard times this is definitely a good option for you. It's also really versatile. It I made it out of this pink floral fabric as well and I love it. I love it both ways. I like the more professional-ish neutral version and I like the sweet, cute, fun version. So hopefully this has inspired you for your projects and please like and subscribe to see more and let me know how you like this format. So have a good one.